So I'm here with John Paisano. Thank you so much for giving us some of your, your time. Yeah, absolutely. I think something that people don't talk about often uh, where being a film composer is concerned is something that takes up a large amount of our time, which is being a head of department. Now, right. you're yeah. responsible for major franchises, which are major businesses, huge amounts of investment. What are people looking for in a head of department, aside from a great composer who can do great stuff with MIDI and orchestras and all of that kind of stuff? Yeah, it's, it, you know, it's a great question. I think the, the biggest thing that's happened, and even, even since I got into this business, so it's been a, a relatively short amount of time that this has all kind of happened in, and it, it, it kind of coincided with the advent of digital filmmaking, so to speak. When, 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 when we went from film to hard disk recording for shooting film and for, for creating movies, um, the whole process sped up, mm -hmm. everything. It's still the same amount of music that had to be written for these films. It's not like the time the, 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 the timeline shortened and all of a sudden they go, oh, well, we need 30 less minutes of music from you. No, we still needed the same amount of music for the same length of film. It just had to be done in a shorter amount of time. So I think what happened was is as composers, um, we had to start thinking of ways in order to complete our task in a much shorter amount of time than we used to have. Mm -hmm. The composer basically got another job thrown on him, and that was, like you said, becoming a quote-unquote department head. I mean, even though it says score by John Paisano, there's a whole team that works with me on all these projects. Um, it's just way too much music to write in, in the amount of time that I'm given just for w me to sit there and, and do it all myself at a mm -hmm. piano with paper and pencil. It just can't get done anymore. There's mock-ups that need to happen. The, the days of me sitting down to write a score and having a director come over and me sitting at the piano and saying, oh, well. And the oboe will do this. La, la, yeah, la. you yeah. see these great videos of, of John Williams and Spielberg, you know, where John Williams is playing in the E.T. theme on the piano and Spielberg standing behind him humming it and all this stuff, and it's awesome. I mean, I love it. I, I, I love seeing that because it just doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if a studio, if Fox walked in here and I said, well, here's what the Maze Runner theme's gonna sound like, and you know, the, the big brass is gonna enter here, they would all look at each other and say, awesome, John, and then they would leave, and I would get a call probably 10 minutes later from my agent telling me that you know, someone else is, is scoring the film. It just, it doesn't happen anymore. I think what's very interesting about what you're talking about is the slightly bitter and twisted composers down at the pub, when you're talking about someone else's score, the person who's not in the pub there with us, yeah. it's like, yeah, but he had a big team on that. As a kind of criticism, and it's like, that's what the studio is looking for. Well, it's, there's different, there's different, there's all different types of filmmaking. There's, 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 you know, movies, mm -hmm. and there's films. Yeah. <laughs> and there's everything in between, Yeah, you know? Um, Avengers is a movie, mm -hmm. you know? Star Wars is a movie. Mm -hmm. You know, The English Patient's a film. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, they're, they're, and one's not different than the other, but, but these studios, these are huge businesses. You know, these are, you know, like we, we talked about, they dump tons, $200 million into these movies. Mm -hmm. um, there's high output with them. There's uh, scoring sessions that are in London and LA, it's both places. Sometimes three or four different scoring sessions are going on at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes there's a scoring session happening and the composer's gotta be in the studio doing changes as the scoring session's happening. Sometimes they're doing picture edits while you're on the scoring stage and you gotta get back to the studio that day and rewrite that cue so it can be on the stand the next day. Mm -hmm. um, people who don't understand that process of it, I can understand why they, why they think it wasn't all written by one person, but the job of a film composer now, and, and I look at it like this, maybe film composer isn't the right term anymore. You know, we are producers. Mm -hmm. You know, it is my job to produce a great score. Mm -hmm. And whether that means me sitting down writing every single note of it, or whether it means me finding out who I can, the best team I can put together to accomplish what my director and what my studio wants, it all falls under the same category. Yeah. And I think that's where film scoring is right now, and for better or worse. I guess when a studio walks through this door, what they don't want to see is a desk with a candle and a quill and a piece of paper <laughs> because they're going to commission 200 minutes of music for you. They want to right. know you're going to get across the finish line. Yeah, it's almost like they don't even want to, they, they just, they don't care how it's done. <laughs> As long as they're coming and hearing reviews and the music's sounding great to them, mm -hmm. what do they care about? 
You know, yeah. they want great music. They want to make sure that it's thematic and it's checking all the boxes that they want checked. What they don't want is they don't want to come to the studio and you going, I, I don't have it. <laughs> yeah. That's the biggest problem. But again, it's such a it's such a personal thing, you know? I mean, there's some directors that might be really put off by this that type of process. Um, and when that happens, you, you adjust, you know? You, if there's a film that I really want to work on and I'm really into it and I really want to work on that type of project with that director, I adjust to how I work with that type of director. But if I'm working on a really demanding film with high output and the studio, it's very political and the studio wants to hear three different versions of every single cue with that day, I got to figure out a way to, to, to make it happen. And that's just the nature of the business. And it's not just my department, it's, it's across the board. It's visual effects, it's music, it's editorial, it's, um, it's music supervision, it's, it's, it's everything, you know? I mean, I, this just hasn't happened to the music department. The music department's a little bit, we still kind of, the music composed by has created a lot of these conversations. Yeah. You know, I, I think that's what's happened. I think, um, you know, but listen, movie directed by, yeah. <laughs> movie produced by, every one of these departments has, has tons of teams, you know, behind it. Yeah. So it's, it's a little bit misleading, I think, these days in film, but it's, it's um, it, it, there's, I, I, for me personally, there's no more collaborative process in the filmmaking process than, than scoring the movie. Yeah. Um, it's, again, it's, 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 a, it's such a team effort, not just from the compositional standpoint, but orchestration, copyist, the players, um, the director's input. I mean, the director shapes my score more than anybody. I mean, I can't tell you how many times, it's actually one of my favorite parts of the business is, is doing playbacks with the director and the director says to me, I, I just don't like this right here. I think we need to do something that's more like, you know, and he'll like, you know, give me some example of some score from some movie and I'll look at him and go, are you nuts? Like, this is never gonna work. And I'll stay here till three in the morning, banging my head against the console, trying to figure out what he wants. And then all of a sudden, it, something clicks into place and it, he was right. And it's something I would have never ever done in a million years on my own. But I was forced into doing something by some guy who I thought was crazy for wanting me to do it. You know what I mean? So it's like those little magical discoveries that kind of happen in the process that makes the job rewarding. I've worked with big composers they're even doing what their directors want. You know, I don't think you're ever at a point to where you're just left alone to do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. It's always a collaboration process. I think even the biggest top A-list guys will tell you it's always a collaboration. Um, and that's why these teams exist. That's why John Williams and Steven Spielberg have done these many scores together. That's why Hans and Christopher Nolan work together, you know, at, at all times. It's it's. It's all about that collaboration, you know? And, but, but that collaboration, you know, it, it's trying to find whatever fits your director the best. And whether it's a team of 30 guys or whether it's just you one-on-one, -on -one, it, it, there's no right or wrong answer to it. Well, the, the sense I get walking into here is that you are faced with in, immense amounts of output, yeah. but you're not a quivering wreck. And I think it seems that you've, I, maybe, maybe it changes when we walk out the door, <laughs> but it, it seems to me that you, you've, you've found a way of structuring stuff so, it's not, it's not a kind of a cancerous part of your life. Yeah, it's, a, um, it's just all about balance. I mean, we, we talked about that earlier. It's, it's just, you know, I talk about how I don't have a writing room in my house, for instance. Because um, when I go home, I, I just, I want to get away from it. I, I try to just, you know, have that life. Mm -hmm. And then I have this life and I try not to commingle them. I try to do these things that throw me into some weird, wild environment that snaps me out of it, and then I can, you need these like little refreshing breaks every now and then. Uh, I think so, the secret of life is, is, is balance and everything. Yeah, we just but balance. it is so hard to achieve. Absolutely, you know? I think it's a real struggle. If you could go back and tell the composer 10, 15 years ago anything, what would you tell him? When I got in this business, I never ever got into it to make money. You know, like I, I, I got into it because I saw a movie, Empire of the Sun, when I was a little kid, and I was fortunate enough to come from a family that allowed me to kind of chase what I wanted to do. Um, 
and I was able to kind of have this naive sense of life almost to kind of say, I'm, I want to write music for a living. Yeah. 90% of the people in this world don't have that luxury. So I was very lucky to be able to even think that way, mm -hmm. let alone go ahead and do it. But you almost, if I thought about it too much, I would have never done it. Yeah. Because it's not, you, you, I would tell someone, you never get in this business to make money. You do it because you love doing it. And honest to God, if I was sitting around s scoring student films right now for free, I probably would still be doing it because it's, it's the only thing I really kind of n know how to do. And I, was, and I was just as happy when I was doing that then as I was now, maybe sometimes even happier, you know, because it is, it, it, it is when you do put a deadline on something, it, it turns into a job. The, the biggest thing I could tell any composer, it's some people make it when they're 25 years old, some people hit it when they're 50. Mm -hmm. There's no one way to do it. When you want to become a physician or a lawyer or there's like this very defined path. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. When you want to become a film composer, yeah, I mean, I can remember, I mean, driving around LA, dropping CDs off at some guy's apartment and. Venice somewhere, and then you're on Craigslist looking for a job, and then you're trying to get an internship at some other composer. I mean, it's just like, where do you go? What do you do? How do you do it? You know what I mean? It's 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 difficult. I mean, it, and it's still that way. It's still, yeah. um, but even now it's become a little bit more structured. But it is. It's you just got to be patient, and you, I think you just have to have the tenacity just to kind of keep going. And it's not a race. That's no, the thing. it's not. I think that can be really damaging for your psychology. Is oh, the yeah. sense that that. You and I are racing each other. No, it's it, it, no. I got my first. I got my first feature film when I was thirty-two years old. Yeah, you know, I've been working in the business since I was nineteen. Mm -hmm. Like it all takes time, you know. And I think everyone kind of moves at their own pace. Yeah. With that, and I think that's why people's careers blossom at at different points, you know. So it is. It's a. It's a. It's a total marathon. Mm -hmm. My agent always tells me that, at least. No, that's great. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks so much for your time. No, thank you. Great. I appreciate it. Real pleasure. Thank you.